Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. In the last video, we made a simple wood floor texture, just so we don't have to look at the black background with red lines. And I'm just going to take a minute now to talk about what I'm thinking that this game is going to be about, because I've been, I've been thinking a little bit, and I said at the start of this series that we will probably take inspiration from current events and do something about that and I think that we will. So after some consideration and watching the news of course, I see that a lot of countries are loosening their restrictions during this current pandemic that we're in. And so I think that our game is going to be filled with people who are now coming out to see each other again. And it is our objective to find the people that are sick and tell them to go home so that as many people as possible can meet each other and spend time with loved ones like we used to do. All right, so we're going to have a lot of people. Some are going to be sick and we have to find the sick people, tell them to go home and then we can get scored by how many people remain healthy that did not contract a disease and in this game we're not gonna mention the c word uh it's gonna be some other disease i yes that's what we're gonna do but so you sort of get to play a hero which i guess is how most games work <laughs> all right that's what i'm thinking i'm not sure of the setting though I'm not sure if it's going to be a bar or maybe a park or something. So if you have any ideas, then please write it in the comments and I'll look at them. Nothing too advanced though, because that will take too much time and we want to finish something. So maybe a bar, probably not a gym, because I feel like then we need to make our people able to use equipment and things like that and it's going to take a lot of anime animating and stuff um it's going to take too much time but maybe a bar maybe a park maybe i don't know if you have any ideas then please tell me a mall i don't know anyway let's continue with today's video so i've already talked for a little bit so i'm not going to do something very big let's introduce an npc entity so an NPC is, of course, a non-player character, so basically a computer character. Yes, let's make that extend moving entity, which we want. Alt-Enter, create a constructor. So this, of course, will need a controller and a sprite library, and it says super. So what we need to do now is to create a controller that this can use, because I don't want to use the player controller. So let's quickly create a controller called the MPC controller within the controller package, of course. And it will implement our controller interface. Alt enter and implement the methods. So to keep this video short, we're not going to do anything with him today. He's going to be really dumb. He's not going to have an AI, no brain, nothing. We just want him to pop up. So that's enough. Go back to our MPC and right, we don't need to do that there. We need to instantiate our MPC. So let's see if we can do that. Let's do that inside of the game state. And we are now doing a lot of object initialization. That was a hard word. So let's actually break that out into its own method. So let's just say initialize characters because I think entities are hard to write. Let's do this now. Initialize characters. Okay. And we want to move this code in here. And we want to move this code as well, since our player does now not exist in, in the constructor. Okay, so the camera focuses on the player. Here we want to also make an NPC. So make an NPC. It's a new NPC. And let's give it a new NPC controller and the sprite library. All right, and now the game objects, we want to add the MPC as well, but it's going to grow too large if we um, 
just do add, 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 add. So let's do add all. The only drawback is we need to put it in a list. So let's make use of this list.of method. Very handy. So the player, and this just takes as many arguments as you want. So MPC. All right, so we've added everything to our game objects. The problem now is if we try this out, you only see one character because they're standing in the exact same place. Also, they have the exact same sprite. Let's make use of the fact that we have two different sprite sets currently. So let's make that, it's the animation manager and of course we need to change, inside of the moving entity, we need to change all of these to protect it so that we can actually access them from our deriving classes. Let's go back to the MPC. So animation manager, let's just overwrite the one that we give him in the moving entity. Possibly we don't want to give it anything in the moving entity. We might want to always do this in the implementing classes. But one thing at a time, just overwrite it for now. So a new animation manager and it wants a sprite set. So use the sprite library and get unit and let's get Dave. So let's first of all, try that again and see that it worked. So now Dave was the one who you could see and we couldn't see us. Um, so now you can see another thing that we're just gonna fix real quick. Uh, as you can see, we are not rendering in front of him. So it is drawing all of our characters in the order that they appear inside of our list. So first we added the player, which means he is drawn first, and then we added the NPC, which means he's drawn second, which works here. First we draw us, and then we draw our NPC, which is covering us. Unfortunately, that holds true down here as well, and we would like it to flip it. We would actually like to sort all of our objects by their Y position. So let's do that real quick. Let's find, let's find, let's find the state, right? Yeah. So here, let's just do sort objects by position and generate this create method. So what we want to do is take our game object and then say sort. So in here, we need to give it a method to sort by. It can be a lambda uh, function. And this is a lambda function, of course. So we've already used one. And there is actually something called a comparator and comparing, which is very easy. When you're just comparing like an integer or something like that, something easy, just a variable, then there are already built-in functions that will do this for you. So comparator.comparing, and then we just need to give it, so first we have our game object. Here we're just uh, naming our variable. And then we just say, which uh, get y. Which variable is it that we want to compare to all of the game objects that are inside of our game objects? So we compare this y. So by just doing this, we should have solved that issue. And we have. Okay, now you can see that it renders correctly, which is awesome. I would also like him to just not start there. And the way that we can do this is when we initialize our character, let's just set his position. And of course we didn't have that yet because I make things as I need them. So now let's go into, this is in the game object, right? The game object knows about our position. So the game object should have this helper method. So just alt insert, make that setter. Now we have a setter, go back to our game state. We need to give it a new position. Let's make use of our game sprite size. So this basically means three grids in three grids to the right, and then let's just do two grids down. And let's try that again. Yes, so now he is over here and we are rendering correctly and we are walking around and yeah. So that was fun. 
Um, in the next video, we'll probably give him some very simple AI, uh, just so that he can walk and stand and pick a random location and walk and stand. <laughs> We'll get there in the next video. So thank you for watching this one. And again, if you have any thoughts about which setting we should be in, then please tell me. Please write it in the comments. All right? Hey, Doc.